All right, family, welcome to another episode of Super Black Comic Book Reviews by Jonathan Soul. And uh, we're going to dig into a classic. Uh, these, uh, these two brothers uh, put these uh, number one and number two, they're working on number three. Uh, instant classic. I'm talking about Tuskegee Airs, Flames of Destiny. Da, 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 da. Instant classic, you hear me? I remember when they was doing the Kickstarter, everybody was like, ah, you know what I mean? That was like a golden time. And they was coming out. Some Another group uh, came out with a comic like Black, like what if only black people have superpowers. It was a bunch of books come out at the same time, around the same time. And these brothers, what was so exciting about them is they had a straight manga style. And their whole, uh, you know, the premise was like, take the historical legacy of the Tuskegee Airmen and then let's let's mix it with like this Gundam kind of style you know this Gundam you know uh, vibration so you know Gundam for those who aren't uh informed when there are cartoons Japanese cartoons where the planes turn into robots right kind of thing I got first introduced to the whole idea of Gundams in Robotech I didn't know what they called Gundams. I just thought they was planes to transform into robots. Y'all remember Robotech Man? Remember the hurt, the Cyclone Cycle Man? I thought I was so bald. Anyway, so let, let me let me stay focused. So basically, I'm going to introduce uh, this comic. Now, why is this comic important? One, it's important because I'm reviewing it. Shit. I mean, dead gummit. <laughs> I only review the best, man. You know, that's number one. Number two, this book is for two kinds of people. One is like the providers, right? And the other is the collectors. So who are the providers? Let's say your girlfriend got kids. And when she brings them over, maybe, you know, you don't want to get off the... Yeah, I don't want to turn off Call of Duty or whatever y'all playing. <laughs> you know what I mean? You only got one console. Give them some books. It'll keep them out your hair. And they'll mess around and learn something, right? Or maybe you got kids. I mean, that's a no-brainer. You know, you don't want your your little brown and black kids to be saying, wow, you know what I mean? And watching all these white superheroes all day, that's no good. Not subconsciously, not, no, nah, because that, you know, that sends a message which we don't even have to, we don't have to go there. I told y'all the story that with my kid, what, was like four years old, five years old? We looking at Brother Man. All he sees is black and, is black people. That's all he sees, being heroic. Saving the day, getting the girl at the end. That's all he sees. What's my son doing now? Being heroic. <laughs> Saving the day, getting the girl at the end. That's all he doing. You know what I mean? So, uh, so, so those people. And then, of course, uh, so, yeah, so your kids, your niece, your nephews. If your girlfriend got kids, you know what I mean? How dope would it be for you to give them a stack of black comics? And they got them for the, the girls and the way these guys are writing them. The girls and the guys. The girls and the guys will, will dig them. Uh, so the other person is the collector, of course. If you're an enthusiast like myself, you know, like before I got into black comics, I, the last one I bought was like when Reginald Hudlin was writing Black Panther and it was like when Storm and him got married. So I bought a book. You know, I mean, it was a, it was a little run. I, was, I bought like Brightest Day, you know what I mean, with the Green Lantern and shit. You know, you read him, you go through it. You know what I mean? Watchmen came out. Well, I didn't buy it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I sat there, you know, read it and you put it on the shelf. You know, and then years later, your boys come over. Yo, man, you got this copy? And I still do when I go to my, my buddy's house, man. And, oh, man, he got such and such numbers. And now it's DVDs and now, you know what I mean, kind of thing. So just to have bragging rights. I got brother man number one. Man. You know what I'm saying? So get these books before they, before they got to print. Uh, so, yeah, so, you know, if you want to collect them and everything. And by the way, you talking about being a hero. You send these books to your little cousins. I talk about nieces and nephews. How about your little cousins? You know what I mean? I, I, my my cousin, she's a few years younger than me. She got kids. So I'm sending her a box of these comics. He's talking about somebody being a hero. Oh, man. You got them reading? You got them off of InstaFace and... Twitter gram and all that shit. Oh, come on, man. Come on. I tried having the kids read Garvey. It's not going to work. 
I used to read. I used to read um, the philosophies and opinions to my kids when they were small. It don't work. They they kids. They can understand that stuff. But uh, you give them some some pictures with these beautiful uh, brown faces. That that's it. A picture's worth what? A thousand. Let me tell you like this. Can I show you? Can I take a snapshot of my my pay, my PayPal? It's probably not a good idea, but. Oh, damn, I logged out. All right, hold on. Let me log back in. Let me show you. Uh, basically, let me then. I bought, I bought these books on four different occasions. And I think I bought about seven books. Most of it was number one. Then when number two came out. And I don't, got, I don't have none right now because I, I get them and then they're gone. I remember one time I had issue number one and two. I went to my favorite coffee house, just chilling. You know? Beautiful little waitress. Oh, wow. What's that? You know, now I had two books, you know, I had that one. And then I had another one, which had a more mature, mature, more arts, more, more, more. It was a different kind of style. It wasn't a manga style. That manga style with the big eyes and all that kind of, that's attractive to like non comic book people to artsy, artsy type people. I gave it to, of course, you know what I mean? Kind of a thing. And uh, yeah, man, it's, 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 it's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's, it's, you Ryan Coogler at that point. You know what I mean? All right, so that's enough of me preaching about uh, the importance of uh, seeing yourself in uh, media and supporting your people who are doing it. These are two brothers, two young brothers that are putting this down. So I'm going to support them. All right. So anyway, so let's move on. Uh, Tuskegee Airs, uh, Flames of Destiny. So it's like, it's like, oh, this is five kids. And I read it maybe three or four times, but my, 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 let me see. One, two, three, four, five. I think it's like five kids, uh, teenagers, you know, just teenagers. And they fly these Gundams. And there's like this Tuskegee kind of airfield kind of thing. And uh, these planes, they're like a top secret kind of vibration. And their leader, Colonel Mars, right? Da, 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 da. You know, he's kind of training the kids and they fly on these different missions. Now, I'm talking about issue number two. Issue number one, um, we got introduced to the kids. And uh, let me show you this picture right now. This is me holding up issue number one. Again, I don't have any because they, can I be honest with you? That book goes the fastest. I got a lot of comics, but that manga is nobody really in the books that I'm buying has that manga style. And that manga style is hot. You know what I mean? I think if you were drawing characters with big eyes, that's always appealing to kids, but manga kind of refined it kind of a thing. So anyway, uh, so issue number two, they're on the lamb, right? They're hiding from the law. In issue number one, they did this mission. They kind of went left toward the end. And so now they got to lay low while uh, Colonel Mars is talking with the authorities, trying to smooth it out. And that's all in number two. And I never show you guys the whole book. I try not to show you even half. I just try to give you just enough to tease. And if you want to pick up this book, you got to go to TuskegeeAirs.com. So Airs like, like inheritance. So H-E-I-R-S, right? Oh, right. I gave you guys wrong spelling. Yeah, uh, H E I R S. So Tuskegee, you know, T U S K E G E E. My son met one of the Tuskegee Airmen, like the original. You know, they're all like ninety and stuff now and everything. And uh, yeah, so so anyway, so it's, it's it's beautiful. Can I tell you something? I know y'all listening to me because I go off on these rants. That's how religion started. Religion, I never forget, I was sitting in the, uh, this lecture with uh, Malefi Kethi Asante at Temple University, and uh, he was talking about religion, and, and he said something to the effect of nothing coming out, nothing coming out the sky but rain, <laughs> right? He said, the people we looking for to save us is us kind of thing. But then he talked about how religion is just the deification of the ancestors. You know, somebody was great, you know, they did good for their tribe, bought a lot of food or whatever, was a great hunter or whatever. And then, you know, 100, 200 years later, you know, people tell, retell the story and all of a sudden this guy got superpowers or whatever. And so I'm not saying that the comics are religion. What I am saying is it's beautiful 
that these brothers, and I should probably give you the names by now, Marcus Williams and Greg Burham. Is it Burham? It looks like Durham. So I'm going to say Burham. Uh, they're kind of, you know, mythologizing the Tuskegee Airmen. And they should. The way I remember the history, they were like the uh, fighter. They were the escort. They would flow fighter planes and they escorted the bombers and they never, they never lost a bomber. They never lost a ship. A ship. Is that the right word? Never lost a plane. You know, so they were like the bodyguards airplane wise for the bigger plane, the bombers. And uh, they never lost a plane is what I remember. And so, you know, that's something worth celebrating. You know what I mean? And, uh, and so, yeah, so, you know, throughout this book and first issue and the second issue, uh, you know, uh, Marcus and Greg kind of weave some real life history in there. And I'm finding that in a lot of these books by black creators that own their product, they do that because that's what black people do. You work for a white organization, you know, you can try to slip it in there, but the editor might say, eh, it's a little too preachy there, buddy. If you don't self-censor, you follow me, you know, there's a lot of uh, critique of the Black Panther movie. Oh, it didn't have this, didn't have that. It didn't go hard enough on this. That's Hollywood family. You don't go hard at your job. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You can't, can't criticize Coogler. Shit. But when you own your own content, you can go as hard as you like. And so these brothers are going hard. All right, then. I think that is enough. So... Yeah, so I've been uh, signifying for about 11 minutes. All right, let's get into the book. Wonderful artwork, as I said before. <clears throat> They're in the woods. They're hiding uh, because uh, Colonel Mars told them to. He said, lay low while I straighten all this out. You know, they're kind of discussing this at the third. And then, uh, you know, there's another panel where, and, and again, excellent writing, particularly for the kids, where they talk about this, the red tail principles. Now, some of y'all may know that another name for the Tuskegee Airs was the Red Tails, because, you know, they're the tails of their planes are red. And so they talk about, you know, it's like a real motivational, you know, kind of pride kind of thing. Uh, let me see if I can read it to you right quick. Let me go here. So it says, uh, you know, the Red Tails, six guiding principles, aim high, believe in yourself, use your brain, uh, be ready to go, never quit, and above all, expect to win. That's the kind of stuff that you want your kids reading. Can I be perfectly frank with y'all? Number one, the few times that I go into the white comic book stores, I never see kids in there. Kids aren't reading comics anymore. Adults are. The 20-year-olds, the 30-year-olds, the 40-year-olds, right? They're reading the comics. It's because they don't write for kids anymore. You know, they stopped writing for kids in the 90s. <clears throat> I remember when I... But my first comic book subscription, it was the Teen Titans. And that was, I don't know, 15, I don't know how old it was back then. Uh, and, uh, and it comes in the mail. I was like, oh, wow, the Teen Titans. And I opened it up, and uh, Robin, who is now Nightwing, is in the bed with Starfire. I'm like, wow. I mean, I was happy a little bit because I'm a teenager, but then I was sad a little bit because now you, you ruined my, you know what I mean? You kind of ruin. it's like the Power Rangers you see it, and then they're sleeping together. It's like, oh, oh you know, <laughs> no, you ruined my, you know what I mean, you know, kind of thing. Family's worse now. I mean, it's worse. It's it's straight, like, it's just, it's very weird, genocidal. It's just crazy. It's just, it's comics has, haven't been for kids in 20 years. But guess what, family? Black comics are for kids, for the most part. Every now and then there's something like Vegas baby over at a kid hyphen comics that comments just straight adults. So you see some boobs in there, some profanity, you know, cats getting blown away, that kind of thing. But you need that. You need a balance. You know, this book, you can get to your kids. All right. So anyway, some keep on going here. And so they talking. And again, I told you about the art style and the big eyes and the manga and all that kind of stuff. And so a little girl who's the leader of the group, you know, she's telling the story you know, about this rescue that she's performing and everything. And that kind of, it kind of relates back to the first issue. So you got to get that. And if I hadn't done you already, go back. You got to go to uh, TuskegeeAirs.com and then you can uh, get that book. And then so there are robots in there. There's martial arts and all kind of stuff. 
witty banter back and forth, cute little dialogue. Um, now we're looking at uh, Colonel Mars. He's uh, like the leader of the group, and there's a senator that they say, that's the woman with the glasses that he's riding with. And then you see his nemesis down here, which is interesting. Uh, I think I told y'all, oh, here's another uh, look at uh, Colonel Mars, which I think is, now, look, family, look at this. Imagine you got a kid. All he's seen all his life is Batman, Superman, Spider-Man, Frogman, Smokeman, every man, 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 man. Everything but the black man, right? Now, if you do see the black man, of course, it's going to be a sidekick, right? He's going to be a cyborg. He's going to be blind like Yordi and, <laughs> Star, and uh, Star Trek, all that kind of shit. Then you got this strong brother right here rescuing a little baby girl. That's pretty damn heroic. You're only going to see that in black comics. That's it. But white comics, because it's, it's threatening to the, to the white male artists, they're going to handicap them some kind of way. They're going to handicap them. You know, that's why he's Klingon or he's, you know, like I say, blind or half machine or have a caretaker like Blade, you know what I mean? It was no whistler in the, in the damn comic books that I remember. It was Blade kicking ass. But in their mind, they think they have to have a white character in there, but that's not true. When you and I was watching Kung Fu Action Theater, all them Chinese brothers fighting, it was no white people, no caretakers, and everybody loved it. But, but you know, Hollywood is not going to let that go. Even though Black Panther about to make a trillion dollars, <laughs> going to make all the money in the world. <laughs> they still going to have a, a, a character in there because they thought, oh, we just got, we got to. But that's okay. If they never give up that idea, I don't give a damn. Guess what? Because all of these cats that you're looking at now, all these reviews, let me explain something to you. I will guarantee that 99% of these books are going to be movies in the next 10 years. I'm talking about full length motion pictures. Oh, John the soul. That's bullshit. I think you're hyperbolic. Let me tell you something, brother. You ever heard of the boondocks? A cat who used to draw comics when he was at the university of Maryland. Then he got a comic strip, right? I got two of his books, you know, little collected comic strips. Then what happened? Went up on a uh, cartoon network. That was before a solo black superhero movie made a billion dollars in 26 days. That was before man. You really think these creators and these business people is going to leave that money on the table. That kind of money. Are you crazy? Come on family. Come on now. This is going to be a major motion picture guaranteed. And your brother over here, Jonathan soul, you understand is hipping you, putting you up on game so you can have your books. You can say, aha, I got issues number one through 10. I knew it. You know, I, I'm there, you know, blah, blah, blah. So that's what's happening. So anyway, so uh, so the kids go on a, like a little nature hike when they're supposed to stay under the radar. There's a brother in a big hat who was also sent by Colonel uh, Mars to look after them because he knows the teenagers don't listen. And uh, you see the little omelet head. I never forget, man. I saw Doctor. Uh, this is one thing that's so beautiful about being over forty. I remember back in my day, I went to go see um, Ivan Van Sertima. He wrote that book. Uh, they came for, but they came before Columbus, and he's the guy that he's he's one of those researchers that actually traveled and dug shit up and all that kind of stuff, did the carbon dating, all that kind of stuff, and they talked about the omelet heads and he showed how these are the same heads that are in West Africa, same design, same style, same seven braids, the whole nine, and that one thing I remember, one I was fascinated with all the, um, the history about how they came in these reed ships with no nails, it was just all reeds and wood. Uh, you know, in that little current, you know, there's a current coming off the coast of West Africa. You put a block of wood on it, it'll float right to the Caribbean. And they got on that current and they came over here, you know, long before Columbus. And they were trading in a whole bit. And it's a story about how 
<clears throat> you know, hundreds of years later, when Columbus finally got lost and, and ended up over here, he saw some tall black men and they were trading and sometimes fighting with the native uh, people there in the islands. And uh, they were trading in gold, gold tip uh, arrowheads or, or gold tip spears heads. And um, he took some of the spear tips and he sent it to his son back in Spain for analysis. And they were the same composition as they used. And I think they called it Gambia back then. Uh, again, a West African country. So this is all real history that they've uh, cleverly, cleverly weaved in uh, to this book. So uh, I'm going to flip through a couple more pages, let y'all see. And I talked about the Gundams. I don't want to show you that part because that's toward the end of the book. But I'll just give you a little taste here. So, yeah, family, I don't. I, this book sells itself. Tuskegee Airs. Get the book. TuskegeeAirs.com. This is Jonathan Soul. Uh, your friend and mine, I'm trying to get word out about these wonderful, uh, wonderful um, media and proto uh, movies that are coming out. Get hip to it now. Support these people uh, so they can stay independent. Because if you purchase a comic today, I guarantee you, you'll get a movie tomorrow. Jonathan Soul, JonathanSoul.com. Love you guys. Peace.